Welcome back. You're listening to the Union Edge Labor's Talk Radio. I'm Laura Weens. I'm sitting in for Charles Showalter with uh, Angela Bachman. Welcome, Angela. Always good to be here. Laura just switched from her, well, from Brittany's usual seat to Charles's chair, so we mean <laughs> business now. <laughs> um, and I just want to remind folks that are listening, you can always find us on the web at www.theunionedge.com. We have podcasting apps for iPhone and Android. It's free. Um, and you can tune in if you miss any segments that you want to check out. Um, you can always find us in those places or send us an email at requests at theunionedge.com. But right now we have have uh, Admiral Joe Sestak on the line with us. Uh, welcome, Admiral. Laura, Angela, it's great to be with you. How are you? <laughs> it's good. It's You know, it's, what's funny is that, you know, you've been on the road, and right now you are very literally on the road, um, and you know, walking in the shoes of, of citizens in Pennsylvania uh, for your uh, campaign for the Senate seat. Tell us what's what's been going on. Yes, after I walked the 422 miles across Pennsylvania, I wanted to walk in the shoes of Pennsylvanians. I wanted to earn their trust, that I would always be in their shoes, understand their hopes and concerns when I got to the Senate, Lord willing, as their senator. I got asked throughout Pennsylvania to try to come to other places, to Erie, to Wilkes-Barre. Today, I'm actually walking, after having been in Indiana County last week, between Easton and Allentown. And so I'm walking 18 miles after having done, been at a high school in Monroe County, talking to 120 high school students. Then I went and did an event on community college, as well as higher education. And then I'm walking to Allentown where I'll do one on small businesses. It's great. I meet people. I listen. And I hope more than anything else, as I talk about the policies we need to restore the American dream, I earn their trust. So, as you're listening, is there any one thing that has resounded more than the others? Say that again, please. It's just a little windy. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so, as you're listening to these people that you're meeting, uh, what have they had to say? Is there any one topic that seems to ring out more than the others? Without a question. Uh, I just had a wonderful gentleman who had walked with me about the first seven miles, and Roger just departed. And he said to me, look, as we were walking and talking about what's lacking in American public service today is political officials are no longer willing to be accountable. I don't mean just say, here's what we need to do, but when it doesn't go well, when their dream is not working out, when Wall Street melts down, when we don't find the weapons of mass destruction, he, as everyone seems to say, look, it just is tired. He's tired of finding people who will not support what they said they'd do and say, hold me accountable for it not happening. That's what people want. More than anything, that's it. So in what way do you think that they should be held accountable? Well, like a good captain on a Navy ship, if the ship comes to harm or the crew comes to harm, a ship goes aground, the captain is relieved for cause because he doesn't try or she doesn't try to duck it. They know that with great responsibility and authority, with them both goes accountability, answering for one's deeds, not just one's intentions. And so, therefore, we should have held, and public officials should have stood up and said, look, I voted to let uh, your grandmom's bank gamble on Wall Street in derivatives. Hold me accountable. This is where I stood, and I did it wrong. I think Americans would reward that. Who's been held accountable for the government not responding to post-Katrina? Think of that tragic war in Iraq. So what it does take is a different type, a different breed of leadership. It's what I learned in my 31 years in the Navy. Be willing to be accountable, not for the good, but for the bad that happens, because you're responsible for it not happening. And, and speaking of your 31-year 31, 31 career in the Navy, um, I know that you have a, a program that's specifically tailored for veterans, and, and that's an issue that's near and dear to your heart. What, is, what are your thoughts on how, how we would take care of those that have served our country? There is a number of ways. First and foremost, get them a job. When Senator Toomey actually stopped the jobs bill for veterans two years ago, it was inexcusable actually three years ago, because their unemployment rate, as they came home from Iraq and Afghanistan, we voted to send them wars as, as a congressman, was 3% higher. Second, we have to give them the health care that they need. And the VA, during Senator Toomey's time as a congressman, kicked out of the VA 
those who earn as little as $29,000 a year and said, you're no longer eligible. As a congressman, I got about half of them back in. We have to get the rest of them back in. And then post-traumatic stress disorder, not and traumatic brain injury. Take women vets. They have a suicide rate that is seven times higher than women in the general civilian population. Mm -hmm. And so when you have Senator Toomey voting to close down the Veterans Administration 10 times, and when you actually have them voting to close down the one bill that was bipartisan to take care of post-traumatic stress disorder, which often leads or can lead to suicide, then you find out that we need somebody to replace him to take care of our vets like the ways I just mentioned. You know, we on the on the Union Edge are strong advocates for proper funding for the Veterans Association. We think that it's really important that um, our veterans have the care that they need. And, and like you're describing, there's a real me- mental health issue after um, folks have served in, in the military and seen some really terrible and difficult things um, that we need to be sure that we're caring for their, their mental health after they come back home. And we're also huge advocates of the AFL-CIO Helmets to Hard Hats program, getting folks into jobs uh, with the the trade trade unions. Um, so what you're describing sounds like things that we would we would certainly support. You're absolutely right. Look, I go into a prison every year on Prime Veterans Day to visit my fellow vets. So many are there, not through their own self fault, but they came home. Yes, they committed the crime, but they came home in Vietnam. We didn't even know what PTSD stood for. There was two recessions couldn't get a job, into drugs, and all of a sudden they're imprisoned and incarcerated. You know, there's a lot we can do. You talk about your great work with the unions for our vets. There's a similar program that is in the Veterans Administration bill, uh, the Veterans Retraining Program. It's a great program. Seventy-five vets have been retrained when they come home for the skill sets that are needed to join the workforce. Senator Toomey voted against it. Look, You can't just send us to war. You've got to take care of them when they come home because they're double the citizen, having protected our lives overseas, and now they can advance our livelihoods with a good job here at home. So it's not just the the veterans that you've been talking about on the campaign trail and and, uh, across Pennsylvania. I know that you've been talking a lot about small businesses as well. I imagine you've seen um, some concern in in the communities that you've been visiting, especially those um, in these, you know, former factory towns where there's just not not as much employment as there there used to be back in the, you know, 60s and 70s. So what what are your thoughts for how um, we could encourage small small business? In the state there of are two things we have to do, in particularly in Pennsylvania, because in the last 40 years, our small business growth has been about half the nation's average. And therefore, if you look at our job creation growth, since small businesses create 70% of all new jobs, our small business growth in 40 years has been about half the nation's average. That's why I focus on small businesses. Two things. One, they need capital to start up because it costs upwards of 50 percent more today than it did in 2004 to start a small business and when you've had this recession that's harmed savings so much and 85 percent of all small businesses start up with one's own savings or your parents savings and now the house is underwater you can't borrow on it we need to have tax credits that if you invest in a small business 50% of your investment is written off if it's a new startup business. Wisconsin did that and quadrupled the investors in small business to get them going again. And second, relieve the regulatory burden on small businesses. It costs 40% more for a small business of 20 employees or less to handle regulation than for a large firm of over 500 people. So if it's an environmentalist who goes in and gets a small vial from a high school chemistry class, and he or she has to fill out the same paperwork as 22 large dipsy dumpster trucks going down the road, I'll tell you, that is going to harm that small business with very little benefit to the environment. So that's what we need to do in my book, Restore the American Dreams, has ways properly to relieve the regulation two different ways. Joe, we've got about one more minute. Anything else that you want to leave us with? Yes. I have to tell you, I'd love it if people would 
join me as I walk between the cities. I think we're doing Norristown and Doylestown soon. It's because Pennsylvanians are great. As I walked across this great state, I'll never forget two things. One was over 50 people stopped to offer me a ride from an 18-wheeler to a young woman as I was walking up the mountain. And then I re- always remember a Republican coming out of a car dealership. And he called out to me and said, Admiral, Admiral. He said, I'm a Republican, but I love what you're doing. It was great. I believe in people. And we Pennsylvanians are the best. We, we agree. <laughs> <laughs> Although we're a national program, so we'll say something else in another state. Thank you. You have a great day. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us, Admiral Sustak. And as always, I just want to point out that anyone else who's running for Senate in Pennsylvania or elsewhere, feel free to give us a call or an email, a request at theunionedge.com. We'd be happy to talk with you as well. I'm Angela Bachman here with Laura Weens on the Union Edge Labor's Talk Radio.